Kroger Tender Ray Beef, no other beef so fresh can be so tender, presents Hearts in Harmony Transcribed. During your visits to your neighborhood Kroger store, you found there's not much chance of getting Kroger Tender Ray Beef. No doubt you've stopped to chat with your Kroger meat man about the nationwide shortage of meat. Now, in spite of today's desperate meat shortage, Kroger is doing everything possible to get meat. As always, though, Kroger will buy only through legitimate channels at legal prices. But while beef and pork are difficult to get, you'll find an abundance of this exclusive Kroger feature at your Kroger store. The main dish guaranteed to delight your family. It's Kroger's selected seafood. Tender, firm-fleshed seafood that's rushed delivered to your Kroger store. And what a variety. There's saltwater and freshwater fish. Fish for baking, frying, and broiling. Once you try Kroger selected seafood, you'll agree that it's the finest flavored seafood in town. That rich, tangy flavor of the sea is yours because Kroger selected seafood is rushed delivered to your Kroger store. That means you can buy with confidence of getting seafood with that wonderfully delicious, fresh-caught flavor. So visit your Kroger store and treat your family to a delicious shore dinner of Kroger's selected seafood. And now, Hearts in Harmony. Thanks to Bill Carver's story that Freddie Lang did not try to rob the store on River Street... Freddie has been freed by the police, and Penny cleared of all charges of harboring Freddie from the law. Suzanne is now home with her newborn baby, and the next morning, Penny is busy being a helpful aunt when the doorbell rings. Oh, there's the doorbell, Suzanne. Excuse me, I'll be right back. All right, Penny. But please, darling, be careful going down those steps. They look very slippery when I came up them yesterday. Now, listen, Suzanne, I'm the one who's supposed to do all the worrying around here. Yes, I just stumbled. That's what I get for being too sure of myself. Oh, golly. Just a minute, I'm coming. Good morning, Penny. Oh, hello, Mother. Am, uh, am I allowed in? Of course you are, darling. Thanks. I wasn't sure. Now, what in the world makes you say a thing like that? Well... It's nice of you to pretend that you don't remember how badly I acted last time I was here. Oh, forget it. No, Penny, listen, I... I want to apologize. Darling, you don't have to apologize to me for anything. Oh, but I do. I wasn't only rude, but I think I was a little bit stupid to say the things I did. You didn't say anything to me, well, Mother. Well, then it was what I said to Professor Rogers. Professor Rogers understood. He felt the same way about Freddie as you have. He thought I was silly to fall for all Freddy's lies and try to help him with his problems. Oh, I, I think you were silly, Penny, at times, but that didn't give me a right to say the things I did. Mother, please don't. And I'm not saying all this now because that Carver person in the hospital proved that Freddy didn't rob that store. I still think the boy's bad for you, Penny. But I'm more than ready to admit I was wrong about him in many ways. You just don't know him, Mother. You can't be expected to be right about him. No, Penny, and that's just the point. I had no right passing such harsh judgment on him as, without knowing him a little better. Well, you can get to know him a lot better, if you want to. Well, not just now, Penny, if you don't mind. I, uh, well, I wouldn't want to make the same mistakes <laughs> all over again. No, darling. No, I, I really don't think we should rush you and Freddie together too quickly. We'll just let time take care of things, shall we? All right, Penny, after I've first taken care of my apologies. Darling, listen. If you think you owe me an apology, consider it accepted. <laughs> what I want to know is, are you and Jed speaking to each other again? Oh, Penny, how can anyone be angry with Jed for very long? Oh, then everything's all right between you two. Of course it is. And I'm ashamed of myself for even quarreling with him, especially about that... that Lang boy. Oh, Mother. Oh, I'm sorry. I've just got to get it into my head, I guess, that Freddie is someone I just have to like. Well, give yourself time, darling. When you really get to know him, you'll find out he's... 
just an overgrown schoolboy who hasn't even been in class long enough to learn the difference between right and wrong. But I do think he is learning now. Well, I hope you're right, Penny. But believe me, darling, just the thought of him scares me. Well, in that case, try not to think about him. There are other things to think about, you know. And how well I know it. <laughs> I came over to see one of those things. May I go up and see her now? Well, I don't know why not. She's in Suzanne's room. Go ahead up. Oh, aren't you coming, darling? No, I have to make the baby's formula for her. Suzanne isn't feeling too well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, it's nothing serious. Be careful of those steps, though, darling. Oh, what's the matter with them? Pat waxed them too well again. I nearly broke my neck coming down to answer the door. Oh, they don't look too bad. Oh. Mother? Oh. Mother, you all right? Oh. Are you hurt? Oh, well, I don't think I'm hurt, dear, but... Oh. Just a surprising thing. You took an awful tumble. That stairway isn't exactly soft enough. Oh, no, but neither am I. I think the steps suffered as much as I did. Golly, I've got to tell Pat not to wax the steps so thoroughly that you can see your face in them. <laughs> well, I certainly went down for a good close look then, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you're sure you're all right? Oh, perfectly. Now you go on and make up the baby's formula. I'll go up and see Suzanne. All right, be careful of the rest of the steps, though. Don't worry. I'm not as young as I used to be. Can't stand more than one fall a day. Tell Suzanne I'll be up in a minute. All right, dear. What happened out there? Oh, <laughs> clumsy me. I fell coming up the steps, Suzanne. Oh, I hope you didn't hurt yourself. Oh, I didn't hurt myself a bit. And I think you can call me grandmother from now on, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you may be a grandmother, but... You know, you'll never look like one. Now, don't waste your flattery on me, Suzanne. I'm proud I'm a grandmother, <laughs> especially of such an adorable granddaughter. Let me see her. Ah, oh, the little darling's fast asleep, isn't she? <laughs> yes. But in just a few minutes now, she'll be wide awake and screaming her head off. It will be her feeding time. <laughs> you wouldn't have her any other way, would you? Oh, no, of course not. Oh, look at her lying there. Isn't she precious? <laughs> <laughs> Have you and Pat decided on a name yet? Well, Pat wants to call her Suzanne, though I can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you want to call her, Suzanne? I think I'd like to call her Valerie. Valerie? Yes. Valerie Gibbs. Of hmm. course, my chief worry with her name is, will she like it? seems so unfair for her to be given a name that she might hate. Mm. She might not like Valerie, you know. Yes, it's possible. But I think it's a pretty name. And it seems to fit well with Gibbs. Yes, it does. I think that... Oh, look, she's stirring. Mm. Oh, those little fists. Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at her yawn. Oh, just wait till she opens her eyes. <laughs> when she yawns and her eyes are open. She's nothing but eyes and mouth with just a little patch of pudgy face in between. <laughs> oh, she's the dearest thing I've ever seen. Valerie Gibbs. I like that name, Suzanne. Is that the baby's name, Suzanne? Oh, Penny, come in. <laughs> I'm sterilizing it bottles now. Everything will be ready at feeding time. Good, thank you. Do you like the name Valerie, Penny? Oh, yes, I think it's lovely. Uh, I didn't know you decided on a name, Suzanne. Well, we haven't yet, officially, that is. Your brother, Pat, would like to call her Suzanne. But I prefer Valerie. Valerie Gibbs, hmm? Oh, I like the sound of that. Mr. So-and-so, I'd like you to meet my niece, Valerie. Valerie, this is Mr. So-and-so. Valerie's my favorite niece, Mr. So-and-so. I knew her when she was just a tiny baby. Oh, oh Penny, please, please don't. I'm sorry. Don't feel that way. I'm being silly, I know. Look, um, maybe if I... Uh, the doorbell, excuse me. Uh, now, now, be careful on those stairs, darling. You know what almost happened to me. Don't worry. And it almost happened to you, too, remember? Oh, just a minute, I'm coming. I'm coming. Good morning, Miss Gibbs. Oh, hello, Professor Rogers. I... Oh, perhaps I'm interrupting something. Would you rather I... Uh... No. No, it's all right. Come right in. Oh. Are you sure it's all right? Uh, yes, of course I am. Well, 
All right, if you say so. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, something is the matter. No. No, it's nothing serious. I guess I was just having one of those silly, feeling sorry for myself moments. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. Uh, the baby's here. Would you like to see her? Oh, well, no, 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 thanks. Not this morning, if you don't mind. I... Well, I, I don't have much appreciation for babies, I guess. Maybe that's because you don't know any. Well, yes, <laughs> that might be it. Um, Miss Gibbs, I, I... I hate to bring up the subject of Freddy when you're not feeling... Freddy? What's the matter? Well, nothing's the matter, I hope. But... Well, the reason I dropped by is that I saw Freddy with that fellow Bill Carver. Oh, Yes, I, I know Mr. Carver's out of the hospital, if that's what's worrying you. The doctors didn't want him to leave, but he insisted. Well, no, no, it's not that. I heard Carver had left the hospital against doctor's orders. That's, uh, that's not what I want to tell you about. Oh? You see... Well, according to the way I understand it, Freddie and this fellow Carver didn't know each other before the... Well, the alleged robbery of the store on River Street. That's what Mr. Carver said. Uh-huh. Well, Freddie and Carver were having quite a... What shall I call it? A, a talk on the corner a few blocks from here. Well, why do you hesitate to call it a talk? Because from what I saw, it looked more like an argument. A very heated argument. An argument between Freddie and Mr. Carver? Yes. And a serious one. Not the kind two almost strangers would become involved in. Now, look, Professor Rogers, just what is it that you're driving at? Well, Miss Gibbs, I... I don't like to alarm you. No, go on. And, well, I don't want to revive dead issues. You're, you're probably well satisfied that your troubles with Freddie are over. Mm-hmm. And, well, I, I hope you're right. Yes, you hope I'm right, but... But seeing Freddie on the corner a few minutes ago... Arguing bitterly with that fellow Carver. Well, I, I suspect trouble all over again, Miss Gibbs. And real trouble this time. So Freddie was on the corner having an argument with Bill Carver. What was it about? Was it about Penny? Is Carver threatening to go through with his promise to get revenge on Freddie by hurting Penny? Be sure to listen to the next dramatic episode of Hearts in Harmony. From coast to coast and border to border, there's a desperate shortage of meat. And that explains why there's not much chance of getting famous Kroger Tenderay beef. You can be sure, however, that Kroger is doing everything possible to get meat. As always, though, Kroger will buy only through legitimate channels at legal prices. Now, although there's a shortage of beef and pork, Your Kroger store has a plentiful supply of deliciously tender Kroger-selected seafood. Yes, your Kroger store has the finest flavored seafood in town, and it's priced for real thrift. So visit your Kroger store and make your choice from the grand variety of Kroger-selected seafood. Now your local announcer.